IROC is back and Stuart Haas Racing got a new logo. Yeah, you heard me correctly. IROC, the International Race of Champions, the series that has been defunct since 2006, is returning in 2024 for a select number of races, apparently, according to their press release. Ray Evernham and Rob Coffin, formerly of MWR, then Ganassi, he's also the guy that implemented the charter system in NASCAR and gave himself two charters and then promptly sold them. Regardless, they are reviving the IROC series. And you're probably thinking right now, well, wasn't Ray Evernham involved with Tony Stewart's superstar racing experience, the SRX series? You'd be correct, and apparently Ray Evernham's out here on his revenge tour because he's now created a direct competitor to a series that he helped start back in 2020 with Tony Stewart. As of 2022, Ray Evernham said that he was no longer involved in the project that is SRX. So now he's created a direct competitor because everybody needs a good rival, right? World of Outlaws now has high limits. Stephen Walls had chain link fences. Pusha T and Drake, their rivals together, and now SRX has a rival. It is an interesting proposal to bring IROC back. I mean, I think everybody enjoyed watching IROC as they were growing up. The series hasn't raced since 2006 when they fielded Pontiac Trans Am Firebirds, and honestly, I hope that's the car they bring back. They're not making a new car, not the way that SRX made a new car. Instead, at least according to their press release, they're going to use historic IROC vehicles in these races. So that could mean that it's going to be like a Dodge Avenger, Dodge Daytona, potentially a Pontiac Trans Am or a Camaro, IROC Z. There is, of course, the outside possibility they do use the Porsche Carreras that they used when IROC was first uh, invented. But IROC's been around since 1974, and they ran all the way up until 2006. Granted, they took a couple years off there in the early 80s. But it was a really fun championship, right? Four races, drivers from every discipline. Dirt racing, drag racing, open wheel, NASCAR, sports car racing. There was probably even some rallying guys that made starts. There's a lot of people to go through over the course of the better part of 40 years. But it was a really fun championship. Mark Martin is a five-time champion. Dale Earnhardt, four-time champion. I will say the IROC series did tend to lean towards the NASCAR guys in terms of who was the most successful over time. But that's not a bad thing necessarily when you're running all your races in America, and it kind of did follow along with the NASCAR schedule. You had races at Michigan, Daytona, Indianapolis, Atlanta. They did run the Daytona Road Course, which was fun. Kind of the first iteration of seeing stock cars race around the road course, which we ultimately saw uh, the NASCAR Cup Series do as well. But it is an interesting proposal to bring back IROC. They'll also be selling IROC merch, and honestly, take my money. Because if you put that classic IROC logo on it, it's going to be great. Whether it's going to be on TV or with the TV partners, that all remains to be seen. And obviously what their schedule is as well. It seems like it's very much in the infant stages of their announcement. I mean, even their press release was pretty short and Speed Sport wrote up a story about it. And I was like, well, it's basically the press release here. So still a lot of questions kind of revolving around where this series is going, who's going to be involved, who the drivers are going to be. It is interesting to think about them wanting to go out and potentially get current era NASCAR drivers, right? The SRX cars, they only race on short tracks. The chance for injury in SRX is relatively low as long as Paul Tracy's not out there on the track. And it's not going to necessarily be the same thing in IROC, right? They're using old technology. It's basically vintage racing at this point, right? Because the Pontiac Trans Am Firebird that they used was, or is rather, nearly 20 years old. So that's getting up there in age a little bit and the technology and the safety behind it isn't up to standards that drivers are currently um, expecting. So it will be interesting to see if any current NASCAR drivers do go out there and get in those cars or whether they go out and try to get retirement guys, right? Which was kind of what SRX was started on before ultimately kind of getting the Brad Keselowski's, Danny Hamlin's, Kyle Busch's of the world to come in and join. I would like to see sort of like a senior tour. No, Mark Martin's not going to come out of retirement and race in IROC. The guy said he's done racing. We're just going to let him be done racing. But it would be cool to see other guys come out. And whether it's guys that just recently retired, somebody like a Jamie McMurray uh, along those lines. Or maybe you get, I don't know if Dale Earnhardt Jr. would do it, but like that's a big name to get out there and come to join. Jeff Gordon. They need to have like some big marquee guys come and join. And make it have some other guys as well. Or maybe in true World of Outlaws and High Limit fashion, we'll see which drivers try to jump to which series to do their little extracurricular activities. Will we see Denny Hamlin jump ship and go join the IROC series or Brad Keselowski do that? Maybe Ron Caps is like, ah, I gotta go join IROC now or I'm staying with High Limit. 
it, or not high limit rather, but SRX. It is kind of a funny proposition to think about two competing, you know, international IROC type of, of series. I blanked out on my words there for a second. But it is kind of interesting to think about having two basically spec series uh, that kind of pit these guys one-on-one, -on -one, right? It's not the car, it's the driver. And that's essentially what it comes down to. Equally prepared cars, all for these guys to go out there and see who is actually the best. Think of the Race of Champions, ROC, which is no longer as fun as it used to be when they race in stadiums, just on ovals at this point. So hopefully IROC does come back this season. They didn't announce a schedule yet, and I believe it's probably all still in the infancy stages of where they're going. But it is cool, nonetheless. And hopefully we get some current NASCAR guys or current open wheel guys to go out there or recently retired, because I think that would be pretty fun and pretty interesting and certainly help drive star power and viewership to the series, which I hope does succeed. It's not necessarily like a NASCAR having competitor and or IndyCar versus CART uh, with SRX and, and IROC, because, well, their championships are pretty short. I mean, at the most, you're looking at a 12-week championship if they don't, you know, run against each other in the summertime. And like IROC, their races were really spread out. It wasn't four consecutive weeks. It was some time in between. And then it would be like the matinee show on a Friday or a Saturday morning or whatever. And that's not a bad thing. I think it has a perfect spot to fit into certain race weekends because there's definitely times at NASCAR tracks and certain tracks where they could use more on-track activity. And hopefully that's what IROC can fill for maybe four of those weeks, if not more, throughout the season. But speaking of Tony Stewart, because obviously he and Ray Evernham aren't getting along, Tony Stewart and his Stuart Haas Racing Team announced a new logo on Monday morning, which we already saw on Sunday because it got leaked, because SHR hasn't done a very good job of keeping anything secret recently. So the team announced a new logo as part of, it seemed to culminate this weird sort of social media campaign that they've been running, where they've been letting everybody know that they're real racers, badasses, unapologetic, unpretentious, and bold, which I don't love any of that, which is fine to be that, and it's fine to sort of have this rebrand, real racers. They've hired all guys based on talent, essentially, at this point, which is commendable. I think that's what everybody wants to see, is drivers getting hired based on talent, not based on the check that they bring with them. But when your team just went winless for the first time in the company's history in the Cup Series, and you couldn't even get Kevin Harvick to victory lane, Maybe we just worry about performing on track versus letting everybody know who you are. It's not that they forgot or fans have forgotten. It's just that you guys haven't been relevant enough for people to really pay attention over the last couple of seasons. And hopefully they do get back to relevancy. Stuart Haas Racing being competitive is good for the sport. NASCAR needs more competitive teams, and they're a Tier 1 Ford team. They absolutely need to be competing. But I don't know if slapping a new sticker on is really the the change that's going to make them better. But as tuner guys know, anytime you put a new sticker in your car, that's worth five extra horsepower. Maybe a new logo is worth 10 horsepower. I'm not really sure. But the new logo, some fans have trashed it. It's a minimalist approach. They got rid of that sort of 50s Chevy Cadillac styling with the script and the badge. Got rid of that. They've gone with this minimalist approach right now. I don't hate it. I think it's fine. I think the Stuart Haas text part does, you know, look a bit like what the original logo for this team was when Tony first announced that he was joining forces with Gene uh, Haas. So I don't, I don't dislike it at all. I will say there is a number of fans out there that think that they left some space there at the bottom underneath the Haas part to be able to tack on whether it's Harvick or Dale Earnhardt Jr. Come a little bit closer. Let me just say this. Kevin Harvick, Dale Earnhardt Jr., they're not joining Stuart Haas Racing. They're not buying in. If you need to come in a little bit closer, let me explain this to you. Gene Haas is a literal billionaire. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kevin Hart don't have the money to buy him out. And even, just scoot back out real quick. And even if they do want to buy in, let's think about this for a second. Live Fast Motorsports just sold their charter, which was one of the worst charters in terms of money payout, to Spire this past season, at the end of the 2023 season, for $40 million. So even if we take right now, that's the going rate for a charter. You're looking at Kevin Harvick and Dale Jr., or one of them each, having to come up with $80 million to buy out Gene Haas or Tony Stewart. Dale Hart Jr. wouldn't spend $12,000 on a pontoon boat for TJ Majors. He's not about to go out there and drop $80 million to buy into this team. So everybody keeps saying, oh, this is going to be the team that Tony buys into. Noah's over there. Josh Berry's over there. At some point, we just have to let these guys go. They're now part of a different team. 
that's not Dale Jr.'s team. They're a part of Stuart Haas Racing. And the idea of Stuart Haas Racing switching over to Chevy still doesn't seem like it's going to happen. I know a lot of fans want it to, but when you look at the comments that Legacy Motor Club made over the weekend, their CEO, Cal Wells, saying that Chevy basically made them a Tier 3 team, there's no room at Chevy for Stuart Haas Racing, whether that be four cars or three cars. Right now you have Hendrick, Trackhouse, Spire, RCR, and then where are you going to slot in Stuart Haas Racing? It just doesn't really seem like it's going to make a lot of sense there. They're going to be at the same tier as Colleg, and that's not probably the tier that they want to be at. So sticking with Ford makes all the sense in the world, and I kind of expect them to re-sign with Ford at this point. Because even being the lower tier 1 Ford team, since RFK certainly brought themselves back up to the top, is still better than being a tier 3 Chevy team. So we'll see what happens with that, but I don't think Dale Jr. and Kevin Harvick are buying into that team anytime soon, and Gene Haas and Tony Stewart certainly aren't going to sell while NASCAR and its teams are in the midst of a new charter agreement, which will see teams get paid more money because of the new media rights deal being substantially more than it was previously. They're not about to sell out now when they can make more money in the future, and charter prices are going to keep going up, at least for the not for the near future, at least. We'll see what happens in a couple of years. But I don't think Dale Jr. and Kevin Harvick are buying in anytime soon, at least not into the Cup Series. So let me know in the comments, are you happy with IROC coming back? What do you think of the new Stuart Haas Racing logo? Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.